Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are gonna do something a little different today. I'm calling this Fragrance 101 by your boy Hustle Man. I'm gonna start this story off a little bit telling you about myself because a lot of the other fragrance reviewers, they're Names kind of self-explanatory, like bow tie the fragrance guy. He wears suits and bow ties. Cuban nose, I mean, he's a Cuban guy. Jeremy Fragrance, Big Beard Business, Gent Sense. Just all the other fragrance reviewers, you kind of know just by their name. It has something to do with fragrances. And then, boom, here I go with Hustle Man. Like, where that comes from? My backstory, I could go on for hours and hours, but we'll sum it up and just say, back in the day, I used to be the CD guy, the DVD guy. They gave me the nickname Hustle Man. I built a brand with it. I was in the music industry. I became a journalist interviewing some of the celebrities that I worked with during my music career. And it just really built up from there. You can even see like <laughs> even my chain is Hustle Man related. So I really built a brand with the Hustle Man name. So I'm sticking to it. And with fragrances, that's something that I always been into. I always had at least 40, 50, 60 bottles of different fragrances. Even as a youngster, I had a ton of fragrances. Maybe not as top shelf as the ones I got now. We probably had polos and curves and cool waters and all that type of stuff back then. I always had a lot of fragrances. It just wasn't a thing to talk about. You're not gonna be like, hey, I got a bunch of fragrances, y'all. Ain't that cool? Like, you really didn't do that. So. The Hustle Man name came from the entertainment business and me being a hustler. So that's how that goes. So that's my little introduction. But today we are doing Fragrance 101. As a lot of you know, I sell fragrances. I am a licensed fragrance retailer. So I get more questions than the average, not just questions that, you know, fragrance reviewers get. I get a ton of questions because I sell them. So we'll start off and hopefully I don't leave out anything. I'm just trying to think of the most frequently asked questions. And one misconception is with Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. A lot of people think that Eau de Toilettes are just like, yo, that's toilet water. I'm not wearing that. It's gonna go away in a few minutes. It's, it's trash and they almost look at toilets like like a, they would a knockoff or something but that's not what it is so yes it has to do with the concentration of the fragrance so you have the eau de fresh which is three percent concentrated the cologne which is like five percent concentrate and i might have these concentrations a little i think i got them memorized but correct me if i'm wrong the eau de toilettes are ten percent eau de parfums are twenty percent i think it's like ten to twenty then you have pure parfum or the parfums which is like twenty to thirty then the extract day parfums i'm I'm not sure the concentration, but it like it goes higher and higher and higher. So um, it is different concentrations. But now the old day toilets, the old day parfums, the parfums, they're different scents now. So that's gonna open the door for me to talk about flankers. So now that the toilets and the parfums are different smells, it's not just a stronger concentration. It's different smells, they're becoming what I would consider them as flankers. And what is a flanker? A flanker is, for example, you might have Dolce Gabbana, and then you might have Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. Dolce Gabbana Light Blue is a flanker of the Dolce Gabbana. And then you'll have the Dolce Gabbana Light Blue forever, You'll have the Dolce Gabbana light blue Italian zest. You'll have the light blue summer vibe. And there's so many different versions to the light blue. So now you have a flanker of a flanker. I know that's a weird name, but that's fragrance terms. So frankers, flankers are just another version from the brand. So it's just like movies and video games. It's different names to each movie what a flanker is. Hopefully you understand, you get what I'm trying to say because sometimes it makes sense in my head. I might confuse you even more, but if you're just learning fragrances, a lot of times I do reviews and you might listen to other reviewers and they'll say flanker or they might use a term and you have no clue. Well, flanker is just another fragrance. So at this point, the 
old a toilets and the old a parfums and the parfums and all that stuff they're flankers also they're whole different fragrances now so that's kind of so when you say oh i don't want a toilet or it's going to be different this most fragrances only make certain ones only come in toilets and mostly fresh springtime fragrances those are usually Oh, they toilet. Also, some of the other terms that I like to use, uh, longevity, that's kind of self-explanatory. That's how long your fragrance lasts. So you're definitely looking for longevity in your fragrances. And there are some old day toilets that will give you longevity. Don't get it twisted and think they only last five minutes. They last way longer. The chart may tell you toilets last three to four hours, but it's some toilets like the uh, Armoff, the Club de Nuit Intense Men, that's the longest lasting fragrance I ever smelled in my life. And it's actually a toilet. They have a parfum version, but the toilet is the one that everybody has that lasts forever. So that goes to show it just depends on the fragrance. So longevity is how long it lasts. Siage. Siage is a term you may hear me use. Siage is when you leave the room does that fragrance linger it's pretty much like i'm not using dictionary definitions but that's pretty much when you leave the room when you still smell that person that's the siage so when you wear a fragrance a lot of people are looking for that when i leave the room i want them to know i was in the room well that's your siage also projection and that kind of speaks for itself also but and I like to tell people how it projects. Like for instance, Club de Nuit Untold that smells like Baccarat. I love to tell people how that projects more and the longevity is better than the actual Baccarat. So when it projects, it just how far can people smell you in the room? Can they be standing across the room and still smell you? Well, that's a good projection. So that's definitely one of the uh, fragrance terms that you need to know. Another fragrance term that we use a lot are clones. And I did a whole video talking about this, but we're gonna just put this fragrance 101, so we are gonna put them all in one. Clones are pretty much fragrances that the fragrance house makes to smell like another fragrance. So you know Armoff, Latafas, a lot of these Arabian fragrances that are coming out now, we call those clones because they are made with the intentions to smell like a more expensive fragrance. So we call those clones and some people be like, hey, you got the knockoff of the bar. They're not knockoffs. Knockoffs are the things that you get from the flea market for $20, $30 that has the same name and the same type of bottle and everything, but only lasts five or 10 minutes when you spray it. Those are knockoffs. The things you get from the guy at the gas station or the flea market, that's a knockoff. A clone is an actual fragrance house that clones the name suite to itself. They clone more expensive fragrances, but they usually have great quality and sometimes better quality than the fragrance that they're cloning. Like we'll use Mont Blanc Explore as an example. Mont Blanc Explore, some people may call that a clone because it does smell almost exactly like Creed Aventus, but it's more of an inspired by type fragrance. Like it's not exactly like Creed Aventus, but it's very close. But the price point is still pretty expensive for that one. So it's, it's kind of like cl most clones are very budget friendly. <laughs> so when you get other fragrances that still are a hundred dollars or more, they're more inspired by, it, but they're not all the way the more expensive fragrances. So if you were looking for a clone of Creed Aventus, you more than likely would want to choose the Club de Nuit Intense Man because it smells just like it. The performance is great, but it's way, 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 way cheaper than anything else. The Mont Blanc Explorer does not smell exactly like the Creed Aventus and is much more expensive. So you will want to go with the Club de Nuit, which is the clone. Okay, so let's talk about notes. You may see me talk about notes. You may see other fragrance reviewers talk about notes. So when you initially spray a fragrance, that is your top notes. So that's usually your citrusy, fresh type notes. That initial spray, when you first spray it, that's 
what you smell. So that's your top notes. Then that leads into your middle notes or your heart notes. Those are usually when your florals come in and sometimes more fruit, it may be other notes, but usually your florals come in in that middle note. Then that leads into your bass notes or your bottom notes, which is usually more woodsy, musky, those type of notes, maybe even smoky, those notes that's gonna last throughout the rest of the uh, fragrance profile. And that's another thing, fragrance profile is all these notes combined is the actual fragrance profile. But when I tell you, I'm gonna try to figure out what your fragrance profile, like give me a hint of what you like. If you tell me you like sweet, fruity or whatever, that's your fragrance profile. So pretty much I'll be able to see what notes are in a fragrance and make a better suggestion for you. So if you say you like fruity fragrances, I'm looking for the ones with like raspberry, strawberry, even citrusy notes, just those real fruity notes in there. If you say you like fresh fragrances, also I would look for citrusy type notes, aquatic type notes, you know, to figure out what your fragrance profile is. All these notes makes up the profile of a fragrance. Now I'm about to use a word that I'm probably never gonna use, but anosmia. Anosmia is pretty much going nose blind to a fragrance. Like I hear people all the time say, man, I couldn't smell the fragrance. But when I walked by people, they were still complimenting me, but I couldn't smell it. So that's like going in Nosmic or that's like going nose blind to a fragrance. And that has happened to me plenty times. But when you walk by people like, oh, you smell so good, but you don't smell it anymore. Especially with that Baccarat type smell. Like it's I've smelled that so many times from Ariana Grande Cloud, Al Haramain, Amber Oud, Rouge, to the, the Club de Nui Untold, and the million other things that smell like Baccarat. I've smelled that smell so much to at one point it got to the, to the point where I would spray something with that smell and I could not smell it. I had smelled it so much, I couldn't smell it, but other people would be like, ooh, yeah, that smelled good, but I had smelled it so much, I'm like, man, this is weird, I don't smell nothing. So that's going nose blind, it's nothing to worry about, it's a temporary thing most of the time, so y'all don't have to hit me up and be like, man, that fragrance was trash, I couldn't smell it. I'll, I'll probably, and if it's something that I know lasts a long time and really projects, I'll tell you, try it again when you go somewhere, and I bet you people will still give you compliments, will still smell you even after you don't. Dry down, always, talk about the dry downs, self-explanatory, but some fragrances to me smell better in the dry down. So that's when those base notes really kick in. I uh, have a couple fragrances that are not that great in the opening. And I have to tell that one example that I found out later was the Moschino Toy Boy. I smelled it on paper at first, I'm like, nah. Uh, I sprayed it on skin. I was still like, uh, but 20, 30 minutes later, one of the best fragrances you can possibly smell, but it opened real rosy, kind of lean feminine. I'm not super crazy about rose. So I'm like, this is too floral for a man's fragrance. Like there's no, at this point, there's no gender, gender roles in fragrances, like wear what you want. But I'm not super keen on wearing floral fragrances. So I'm like, nah. But when that thing dried down, it turned into something magical. So yeah, the dry down, that's when you let it sit on your skin and those middle and base notes start coming in, that's your dry down. And usually it just takes a few minutes for it to change up. But all fragrances do, do change a little. You may not notice it sometimes, but all fragrances do change a little as they sit. They also have fragrances that they call gourmand fragrances. And just like the name suggests, these fragrances smell like food. <laughs> you know, it may smell like chocolate or cookies or vanilla or caramel and edible like foods. Those are considered 
gourmand fragrances. So if you ever see me or another fragrance reviewer refer to something as a gourmand, um, it smells like something you can eat. <laughs> I want to talk to y'all because this is something I go through as a retailer and I don't look like your typical fragrance retailer. And to be honest, most of the people that look like me happens to sell knockoffs, but I am a real fragrance connoisseur. You see my collection. This is my personal collection. That's not what I sell, but I had to go through the third degree in the beginning, you know, when I first meet a potential customer, the first question is, is it real? Well, I'm going to tell you or show you a few ways to tell if a fragrance is real. Number one, the price point should tell you and where you're buying it from. I don't post up at gas stations and all that type of stuff. I don't sell at the flea market. If you're buying from one of those places, more than likely you're buying a fake fragrance. If they are selling jupe, cool water, Calvin Klein for the same price as bun number nine and um, Creed and all that, everything's $30, $40. You got to know the chances of this being real is rare. And just the price alone, 30, 40 bucks, that should tell you also. Sometimes they're a little more, sometimes they want 50, 60, but fragrances are very expensive. If you go in Ulta, Sephora, Macy's, Neiman, Saks, wherever you go, only thing that's cheap right now or cheaper is like the Ariana Grande type fragrances. You can still get those for under $100, but they're still knocking on that $100. 90% of fragrances cost well over $100. Even the smaller bottles are usually 100 or more. So when somebody's selling something like that for $30, $40, even though the packaging looks good, the bottle looks right, and you might smell it, and it smells like it or similar to it, that's not it. And it's probably only going to last five or 10 minutes. We get past that point and they trick you on that part one part they can't trick you on is the batch code that's at the bottom of most fragrances is on the box and it's on the actual bottle so you can take those batch codes and you can look up when the fragrance was manufactured what year and the whole nine so real fragrances have batch codes. Most fake fragrances do not. You might run across some with batch codes. Even if you do your research, you'll find out that's not a legit batch code. So that's one of the ways you can tell. And there's other ways that you might not want to go all through. Like you can look at the lettering, the color will be different. You can take the top off and pop the top and look all in that and compare and it's a lot of different ways. It would be a lot of differences. Like I'm not a shoe guy, so I can't tell you the difference between a fake Jordan and a real one. I really wouldn't know how to look at the threads and all that, but with fragrances, I know these very well, but I can spot them a mile away, but I know the average person can't. And if the bottle, I mean, they're giving you bottles that look legit, but that batch code, that's going to tell you, the quality. When you spray it, this Valentino is going to give you six, seven, maybe even eight hours longevity. Those fake fragrances, they mostly, they fade away in 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes sooner. So you'll know, but the biggest thing is where you're getting from and how much you're paying for it. That's the biggest thing. So I just had to address that. That's still fragrance 101 because I'm kind of showing you how to tell, you know, if you're getting a fake fragrance or not. A lot of my customers, they come to me later like, hey, I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I got got or whatever. And you can't always trust online either. Amazon, you know, has third party sellers now. eBay, anywhere where it has third party sellers, some fakes will creep in. And you usually can tell by the price and even some of these Arabian fragrances, even though they're budget friendly, they have knockoffs of those also now. So, and TikTok shop is notorious for it. So I'm not knocking all these places because they do sell. It's real stuff on TikTok shop. It's real stuff on Amazon, but you have to look through the reviews. You have to really be careful buying a fragrance online to make sure it's real. Um, it's some credible like me. 
I have a lot of good reviews, 4.9 stars right now, but definitely if the price is too good, if you're buying Chanel, Chanel does not even give discounts to me really. So if you see Chanel for fifty dollars or something, it is not real because Chanel don't show no love, you know. So uh, stuff like that should tell you if it's real or fake. Like you should know. But I just wanted to address that real quick also. And if it's any other questions you could possibly want to ask, feel free to message me. I'll get back with you and let you know, even if you choose not to shop, I love fragrances. I don't mind answering questions. Let's discuss. Let's get it. All right. But this has been Fragrance 101 with your boy Hustle Man. Letting y'all know, get you a little background on myself, a little background on fragrances. And uh, I'm out. I holler.